Now, if you're a cash-strapped city trying to make ends meet, what can you do? Well, you can hike up a few local taxes. Not very popular. You can hand out more parking tickets, I suppose. That's not very popular either. Or you can squeeze a few more bob out of foreign tourists, provided, of course, you're the kind of city which attracts tourists in the first place. Our reporter Simon Tullett's been to a city which knows how to surcharge. A string trio plays to a small but growing crowd in the Piazza Navona, one of the biggest public squares in the heart of Italy's historic capital, Rome. This group is among dozens of other musicians, street entertainers and artists trying to prize a few euros from the hundreds of tourists who pack this square as the sun sets on a busy day of sightseeing. But recently, for those staying in the capital overnight, the street entertainment hasn't been the only thing trying to empty their pockets of a few more coins. The city itself has been at it as well, as I found out when it came to settling my hotel bill. So I'm just checking out of the room. I've got my bill. Now, it's got the amount for the number of nights I stay, the usual hotel charge. But then at the bottom, there's a note here in Italian. Excuse my awful pronunciation. Assolto contributo di soggiorno per euro. And it has 16 euro charge. Now, I'm here with um, Alejandra from the hotel. Alejandra, what is that charge exactly? Well, these are city taxes and they go towards the services that the city of Rome provides to any tourists, such as public transports, uh, cleaning of the city and so on. Well, it may only be a small charge, a few euros per person per night, but it's on top of all the usual taxes on accommodation, food and air passenger duties. And all of that comes on top of the cost of the actual holiday. So how did it go down with the other tourists in Rome's Piazza Navona? I don't feel it's unfair, and if I don't like it, I don't come here, so it's uh, voting with your remote, isn't it? It's not really a problem to pay, but obviously it's kind of like money that isn't including the price, which is sort of comes off as a little bit dishonest. Well, I, I don't really understand it. I don't know what it's for. When you book the hotel, it includes everything, and if there's a tax in there, there's a tax in there. There's nothing we can do about it. It's a resigned acceptance felt not just in Rome, but across Europe's most popular tourist spots, from Spain to Ukraine. It's even spread to Germany. Its capital, Berlin, is aiming to bring in its own tourist tax early next year. Jens Metzger is from Berlin's Senate Department for Finance. I asked him why. Berlin is still facing a public debt of about 63 billion euros. One strategy is to limit public expenses, and the other way is to increase the revenue base of the city. So that is why we introduce a city tax. And the other reason is that Berlin has been tremendously attractive for tourists over the last years, and we think it's more than fair to collect a small and moderate contribution from tourists to keep investing in our public infrastructure. The idea of a tourist tax isn't new. Visitors to the USA have been paying so-called bed taxes for decades, but it's their recent and fairly sudden introduction across Europe since the financial crisis that's caused some concern from industry watchers. Ramesh Durbari is a tourism expert at the University of Bedfordshire in the UK. He says that although the charges are small so far, Berlin's would generate less than 1% of the city's annual budget, city governments should tread very carefully. I think this is a way to increase their revenue, to boost the economy and not to put it on the residents because tourists are not voters. If they are using a service which is in another country, they should be paying, but it is their amount. If we're asking too much, they will go elsewhere. Because most European tourist taxes have only been introduced in the last few years, there's not enough evidence yet to determine whether they're affecting visitor numbers. But if they are, it's bad news for a trade that generates more than 350 billion euros each year. Tom Jenkins is executive director of the European Tour Operators Association. This is a tax. Taxes cost money. They have to be paid. They put prices up. If they're going around taxing tourists, they really ought to try and improve the services that they offer to them. Finding a tax that people are happy to pay would be a thankless task. 
but Europe's bustling destinations might just create one that tourists eventually accept, but only if they can prove that it goes towards enhancing the visitor experience and not plugging the black holes in their finances. Do that, and these taxes may be around long after the financial crisis is over. That's Simon Tulip reporting from Rome. Well, final word to my guests on the programme today, Rivati Ashok in Bangalore and Bethany McLean in Chicago. Uh, Bethany, first of all, um, do tourists uh, get a little bit of a raw deal financially in the Windy City or not? (laughs) <laughs> well, I think the Windy City is such an excellent place to visit that you couldn't possibly get a raw deal apart from the really bitterly cold wind coming off Lake Michigan. No, 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 seriously, there's 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 a lot. I think that's part and parcel of being a tourist, figuring out where you're being taken advantage of and hopefully where you're where you're not. Of course it is. Yeah. And I know that in uh, in Bangalore, uh, there is a, a tourist tariff that people pay. I mean, when you take your shoes off to go in the temple, you, 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 you charge more than if you're a local. That's fair game, though, isn't it, don't you think, uh, Rarity? Yes. Uh, there's always, uh, for people who do not hold an Indian passport, uh, quite often there is an additional charge in hotels and uh, uh, other places of tourist interest. Uh, basically, the subsidising the local community and uh, because a lot of them uh, have difficulty in even minimal affordability on uh, several of the uh, services that uh, the tourism industry can provide. Well, personally, I think it's uh, it, you should be able to put your hand in the pocket if you've gone to visit somewhere. Um, uh, Bethany McLean, thank you very much for blowing the trumpet for the Windy City for us. And Revati Ashok in Bangalore, thanks very much for being on board.